Welcome to BizWire. I'm Joseph Nordstrom in Beijing. China is going global on an ever-increasing scale, as can be seen by its investments in Southeast Asia, Africa, Latin America, and slowly but surely in the Caribbean. In the past decade, China has invested only about half a billion dollars in the Caribbean, small relative to its sum spent elsewhere, but this is set to explode in the near future. During his visit last June to Trinidad and Tobago, China's President Xi Jinping announced $3 billion in soft loans and investments, as well as a grant of $8 billion to the region. Most of the investments are meant for the construction of highways, ports, and hospitals. While still small compared with China's presence in Latin America and Africa, principal with the Cordoba Group, Fernando Menendez, says it represents a substantial investment in contrast to the erosion of the position of the United States in the region. Menendez says from an economic perspective, China has little to gain in the region. And that may be true, at least for the time being. Trinidad and Tobago do have relatively small amounts of gas and oil reserves, while Menendez points out that Jamaica and Guyana export bauxite used in making aluminum. But China still sees potential in the region. In Jamaica, for example, China Harbor Engineering Company is investing $1.5 billion dollars to build a transshipment port on Goat Island. The port will serve as a logistical hub that will help China to take advantage of the expansion of the Panama Canal. As Menendez writes for China-U.S. Focus, from China's perspective, this will extend its global distribution capacity. Elsewhere, China Development Bank, China's so-called super bank, has invested $500 million in a nickel processing facility in Cuba. Likewise, in Cuba, the Chinese petroleum giant Sinopec has been conducting offshore seismic testing since 2008. Great Wall Drilling has provided drilling rigs off of Cuba's northern coast. What so far has been relatively modest attention could change if China's plans to finance and build a canal across Nicaragua come to fruition. This would multiply China's presence in the region, with shipments of goods to and from the Middle Kingdom expanding significantly. If the canal does get the green light, it could take a decade to build, cost upwards of $60 billion, and would cut through vast stretches of dense tropical forest. At 180 miles, it would be more than three times the length of the U.S.-built Panama Canal. It would also accommodate super tankers and giant container ships that are far bigger than those the Panama Canal will accept even after its expansion is complete next year. Tim Johnson of McClatchy writes that for Nicaragua, a poor nation of 5 million people, the project may punch its ticket out of poverty, creating jobs and relative prosperity. For China, the plan would mean easier access to crude oil from Venezuela and a greater foothold in the Western Hemisphere. Johnson says such geopolitical considerations may weigh more for China than the price tag. Author of the 2009 book China in Latin America, R. Evan Ellis, says China has never believed that the Panama Canal and the Panama Canal Authority are independent of U.S. influence. Ellis says China sees a certain value to having their own canal. Much larger than the Caribbean, China's trade with Latin America is forecast to hit $400 billion within two years. And given the current pace of growth, China is likely to replace the European Union in 2016 as the second largest export market for Latin America and the Caribbean. You're watching BizWire on the Blue Ocean Network, China's first and only privately owned English language broadcast media. Our full episode can be seen on our website, bon.tv backslash biz dash wire. In just a moment, we'll continue with more insight into the big picture of China's economy.